Jolene, Jolene Manina. And you are doing Wednesdays downtown now. And I'm, I'm so excited when I saw you're coming on because I, I love it. I love Wednesdays downtown. I've been there with, with all the food trucks and the painting and everything. Tell us a little bit about how it got started. So Wednesdays downtown is an interactive block party for Fremont nice. East. So this is a great crowd that should be there yes. every Wednesday. We started on May 7th and we're actually gonna have our final one next Wednesday. So it's very important for you to come out. So it's all the bars on Fremont East, we all got together and the idea behind it was just to create this beautiful street and uh, add some energy to it, it on is. Wednesdays that normally lacks and to get, you know, great people down there and get them in the bars. So by doing that, we added the string lights to the street. Ah, right. um, we brought down a downtown dirty bar fight, so nice. everyone can watch for that. Uh, we do a silent painting. disco. We have a painter's lounge. Yes. So you can, anyone can walk up at any time from 7 to 11 and actually paint. And it's expressive, so they're all a little different. And, and there's it's, no um, charge. There is a charge. Oh. <laughs> there's a charge for supplies, so it's $30 to do it, or it's $40 for two people. Uh -huh. And there's actually a teacher that walks around with everyone, uh, nice. the, the woman, Christina. Who, That's perfect. Uh, yeah, she is. I love intuition. She's awesome. Yeah, I love So there's that, and there's the food trucks, and then every week we do a guest chef. Oh, okay. So the guest chef is placed on one of the food trucks, usually uh, Lola's D Kitchen. Mm -hmm. And uh, last week we had Sheridan Sue from Fat Choy. This week we're going to have uh, the Good Witch, nice. and then we had Echo and Rig before that. Nice. Uh, I and love we had Naked Echo City Pizza. And Rig. Yeah. I love that place. So I it's been great. Place. If you're locals, so you can drive, like you can ride your bike down. We do a bike valet for everyone. Oh, that's great. We do some like mini bike racing as well. We've got a powered bike down there that powers up some music. So the idea is just to get down there, have some good time, and then there's a happy hour for six hours. Yeah, we love the happy From hour, six right? To, to midnight. Six hour so. happy hour. That's my kind of happy hour. <laughs> yeah, so it works out. And so if you look down the street, I do a, a lineup of entertainment, and um, all the bars have either a DJ that night or live bands. So I love it's that. all listed for you. So Wednesday's the new Friday. Wednesday really. is yeah, the new Friday. That's great. Downtown Las Vegas. It's the new Excellent. Yeah. I love that. And so um, if your last your last uh, show is gonna be on the, this month, when are yeah. you gonna have the next one? You're so just we're planning down on for the summer, we're or? planning on coming back September and October ah, for a nine week run. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. That's yeah. wonderful. Well, thank you so much. If we need to uh, learn more about Yeah, Wednesdays. you can go to uh, dtlv.com slash Wednesdays. And then, I mean, pretty much just all over social media, it's hashtag Wednesdays downtown. Excellent. We've got a video out, too. Maybe they'll show it later. Oh, nice. After this. Yeah. Nice. Very uh -huh. good. Very good. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, yeah, Jolene. Of course. I really appreciate thank you coming you. on today. Thank you. Excellent. So we do a little game here. Okay. I don't know if you've done this before. Have you I done have the not. fortune cookie yeah. game? So we have our fortune cookie game, and what, what it entails is you're going to pick a fortune cookie, and it's going to be our fortune for the week for downtown. We're going to pass it around. We've got a great fortune handler who's going to pass it around, and we're going to play the telephone game. So the first person is going to open up the, the fortune and whisper it into the next person's ear, and we're just gonna keep passing it down, down, down the line. And to know that where the fortune's traveling, we're gonna travel with this, right? Everybody gets the flag, that's awesome. So I want you to pick a really, really good fortune. A good one. For the downtown. Skip for the, the bad week. one. Yes, yes. So not this one. Oh, that's a bad one. Okay, perfect. <laughs> that. Okay, that's okay. So hey. that one? Hey, okay. you're the boss. Yeah, whatever okay. works, all right, all right, whatever all right. works. All right. Do it. Is that it? Is that it? Okay, we'll get our, our fortune cookie handler, if we may. Thank you, sir. Wonderful. Thank you. We'll travel with the flag. Beautiful. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Jolene. Okay. <laughs> cry. You'll be the stadium soon. This is a person who is the former CFO at Tuscany Casino. Now he's running for governor and he's not accepting any money, so no campaign contributions, no contributions from individuals, no money whatsoever. So definitely has his work cut out for him. Um, you're also advocating for a new high-speed rail that will actually go from Los Angeles to Vegas. So we're going to ask you questions about how we can afford this and how that's going to work. And then you also said you're going to be willing to wear Google Glass all the time. Yes. 
OK, so we're going to talk about Not that, too. Not all the time. Not all the time. <laughs> Not all the time, right. When, when I go to bathroom, I, I don't know. But worry. how do we know? <laughs> if you're in the bathroom, maybe that's where you take the bags of money. Like, you'll see. It'll be tough. We'll see. But I'm just teasing you. And then also, the big thing is you're going to move the state capitol here to Las Vegas from Carson City, yes. right? So OK, put our hands together for Charles Chang. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, so let's talk about this high-speed rail. I mean, the first, the way that we first got in contact is we had a conversation on the downtown Las Vegas LinkedIn group about the Hyperloop, and you know, it was not really a truly serious conversation until you came into the picture. And now it's something that you're saying could be done, not with the Hyperloop, but with high-speed rail. Tell me about the plans. We all know one third of our visitors are from South California. It's about 30 million people. Okay. Now they're stuck in traffic for seven, eight hours to come over here. So it, it would decrease their intention to, to come over here. That's why we need this high-speed rail. Get them over here in 80 or 90 minutes. OK. Yeah. So I, I was saying if we do that, they will come over probably more. And uh, the visitor, I think, at least double. Right, I think so too. And uh, it will boost our economy by at least 30%. Okay. And I think this is the only way to boost our economy in the short run or in, and the, also in the long run. Okay, so if we're getting a 30% boost in the economy, what do you think that calculates as profit? And then is that enough money to pay for this thing? Or how are you going to afford to build this light rail? Uh, lots of people ask me where the money comes from. Yeah, okay. that's, yeah, me too. If you, <laughs> it's a good question. Yeah, yeah they're smart people. Good, I assume. Yeah. If you heard about a terminology called first mover advantage, mm. I use it all the time. Yeah, <laughs> that's my thing. Yeah, yeah this I love it. this high speed rail will be the first complete project in the United States. Okay. In six years. So the company will come over to build this project. He has an advantage because he's gonna set up the standard. Mm. for all the United States. So if we open a bid for international company come over, like the company in Europe, in Japan, in mainland China, and also in Canada, they will all want to get this first project. So we will ask them to invest 90%. They can earn their money back. And uh, we only provide 10%. And this 10%, we can issue bond. It's about $1 billion, because the total project will cost $10 billion. Oof. And this $1 billion, the state issue bond for 2% interest. So the total cost is six years for that 2%. And after that, the investor can consider convert their bond into the stock of, to run this project. OK. And uh, because this project itself increased 100,000 jobs, so those people will spend money. And the sales tax is twice of the expense on the interest. Mm -hmm. So actually, the state earns some money to build this project. So that's my business okay, plan. OK, right. And you have a, you're, you've been the CFO at Tuscany Casino for how long? Eight years and okay. five months. So you're comfortable working with the numbers, huh? Yep. OK, well, we'll see. If anybody has any questions, we'll follow up on that. But I want to move on to the um, Google Glass thing. So that's pretty brave. Like, you want to wear this Google Glass, and you're going to give maybe the citizens a peek of what it's like inside those crazy meetings, huh? And like when people are bidding for the, the rail and all that yeah. stuff? If I ask everyone over here, uh, what do you think about a politician? Probably. Politician become a bad word, bad professional. <laughs> Nobody trusts it, right? And also, our country have big problem. The rich company actually own our politician through the lobbyists. Right. So we have to cut the tie between money and power. That's why I want to raise the bar, raise the standard for all the politicians. I want them to follow me. We will do the 100% transparency. That's why when I am governor, I wear Google Glass. OK. 
And everything I say, everything I do, will be online every day. Yeah. And also, I think everybody over here, you are the people, you are the boss. All the politicians, they are employees. So they should under our supervision. Right? Right, yeah. And then. Oh, yeah, we're the boss, yeah. 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 Oh, you're right, though. Feels like we lost touch with that, but it's true, right? It yeah. should be true. Okay, so you're not taking any money from anybody. That's the big. That's 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 what I actually really love about your campaign, but it's also what makes me the most worried. So it's not even <laughs> from anybody, right? Because Sandoval is. Do you don't have any idea what he has? Like, is he in the millions? Five, five million. Okay, so five million versus zero. So it's a battle. You know, it's a battle that can Do you think it can be won? And if so, how is that going to happen? Uh. You know Tony? Tony Shea? Heard of him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He used his own resource to make everyone over here life better. Right. Do you agree with that statement? I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. So I plan to use my little bit resource to make everybody's life better. So he's my role model. Okay. So I have Aww. to do that. <laughs> I told I told you the story. Yeah, tell them. Yeah, we should. Yeah, <laughs> I I am a runner for the uh, this position only fifty nine days now, and the reason I run it it's related to this downtown project because in February our uh, UNLV MBA group come over here. Uh, pay, pay a visit over here, and then Tony Shed talked to us. In that meeting, I suggest him to run the governor. Because I, uh, the uh, statistic shows in Vegas right now, we have more than 2 million people live here. And the north side only have uh, 500,000 people. That's why last time, Brian Sandoz, he only got 382 votes. 382,000, I'm sorry, <laughs> votes. And if, if Tony Shea run the governor, he, at least he will get half of the votes in Vegas, in Great Vegas area. So that's about 500,000 votes. Okay. So if he run it, he will win it. So I provide this uh, uh, statistic to him. Unfortunately, he said no. <laughs> Not surprised, because he's a very low-key person. and. Uh, and then my classmate, they say, hey, Charles, you have a great idea. Why I don't do you it. run it? Because in They're that right. meeting, yeah. yeah. In that not? meeting, I suggest, Tony, you only need to do one thing, build a high-speed rail. And uh, then my classmate say, you should run it. And uh, you know, Confucius say that if you don't want to do something, you shouldn't ask somebody to do it for you. <laughs> So I'm stuck there. Good. And so I say, OK, I run it. That's how it started. And uh, if, if you ask me if I regret it, I will say I'm happy to have this experience. And uh, I found out. Yeah. No, no, yeah, I'm glad. Yeah. Mo yeah. Most of the politicians, I went to a meeting. They say this is a mainstream uh, politician meeting. So I found out I'm alone. I'm the only business person in there. They are either lawyers, union worker, oh. and sorry. Oh. <laughs> I should say sorry to my wife too because she's <laughs> she's a lawyer, <laughs> and uh, and also the uh, government officers. They they wondering who will be their boss. So no wonder nobody can fix fix our problem. Right. That's why I say, okay, I'm doing something. I, I, I provide solutions, right? Right. They can provide all kinds of argument and uh, point finger to others. But, but you have the solution. I have the, the solution. The thing that they've never had. Yeah. So. All right, so before we end here, we've got uh, a website. You at least, you know, you don't have much money, but at least you've got a .org up there. So that's, <laughs> that's good. Like, we got something we can rally behind. So VegasFirst.org <laughs> yes. is what we're doing. So that's Vegas and then the number one first. Um, one sd.org and then uh, I can't make you governor but we can at least sing you a drinking song 
That's good. We've got plenty of drunks for it. So, so yeah. And you guys, can, they can ask questions through your website. Is that a good place for them to? Yes. Do you want them to email you or? Yeah, they can email me at the Charles Chan ninety nine at the Yahoo dot com. Okay. All right. So we're gonna sing you. We're gonna sing you our famous drinking song, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> Holiday with Holiday What TV. I celebrate holidays all the days on YouTube. Please subscribe to my channel, Holiday What TV. For example, in a couple of days on Sunday, May 25th, is National Geek Pride Day! Yes! What's up? Yes, yes! I like that. Oh, I, I missed you a little bit. Good. Um, so, uh, uh, who here identifies themselves as a geek? I'm just curious. Anybody? Okay, awesome. What, what makes you a geek? Well, what, what's the difference between a, a geek and a nerd, by the way? Do you people know this? What happened? What? Well, this holiday was created. <laughs> this holiday was created uh, to be May twenty fifth every year because a certain movie debuted in 1977 on that day. What's that movie? Do you know? Star Trek. Star Trek. No. <laughs> Star Wars. Yes. Yes. Very good. <laughs> Yes, that's right. On May 4th, may the 4th be with you, Woo! National Star Wars Day, and I have a confession to make, and this may lower me in your eyes as far as it steam, whatever, but I've never seen Star Wars. Is that what? terrible? Oh my god. I know. Oh my god. I know. It's really, really bad. I probably should see the movie on the holiday next year at some point. Anyway, so today is also a National Museum Day. Yes, yes. Who likes, who likes museums? Anybody? Yeah. What's, what's your favorite? Shout them out. I want to hear. National Aerospace. Aerospace. Wow. There's a lot of museums here in, in downtown, right? Yes. Today, actually, I was just shooting at Neon Museum. Have you guys been there? It's so amazing. They got this amazing scrapyard of like old Vegas artifacts and stuff. Like hotel signs like Sahara and Tropicana. It's kind of amazing. If you guys don't know, I'm shooting a happy video by Pharrell uh, utilizing downtown Vegas. That's my new thing. I'm going to now announce when it is going to... Oh, my mic all went all the way down. Oh. Uh, excuse me. We're just going to... We're gonna cut this out of YouTube. See, maybe I shouldn't no, no. announce. No, we shouldn't cut this. I can't get this to work, Dylan. Okay, it's good. Fine. Maybe. See a little nipple? I don't know. Okay, so um, yes. Yeah, so I'm announcing my uh, premiere of the video is going to be here at the podcast in two weeks, in two Thursdays. If I don't announce it now. I will not be accountable for it to myself. And so it needs to be finished already. And so I'm excited about it. So if you haven't danced happy for me yet, you should talk to me. So the sponsor last week, same sponsor this week, these, these guys, Redfin, redfin.com. Do you remember me talking about them last week a little bit? Yeah? Um, they're just to recap a bit. They're the number one in tech combining real estate. No one else as pioneers like them in that category. Uh, so let's just move on. Uh, also, if you don't remember, uh, their real estate agents don't make commission. They don't, they make their money based on the surveys of their customers, which I think is really special. So today, I wanna to talk a little bit about their mobile app, which is kind of amazing. I actually downloaded it today, and it, because of their technology, it's so beautiful. If you're a home nerd, you could just literally be on their app all day long just looking at homes because you feel like you're inside the home. It's that beautiful. Now, I'm going to read my cheat sheet a little bit, which I never do, but I decided, you know, Mac, be kinder to yourself. You don't have to memorize an entire segment. You can be like the Johnny Carsons of the world and, and use notes, so don't <laughs> judge me. All right, so um, they are the only app that allows you to book home tours right from the app. No one else does that. They do that. And if you know anything about home tours and real estate, it's like insanity, like rescheduling and scheduling. It's a hassle, but not with Redfin. You just book it, boom, on the app. It's amazing. They are also the only app that allows you to schedule open houses from your phone. 
It's called open house schedule. With just a tap of a button, you can add any open house to your open house list. It's gonna create this itinerary for you and it makes your to-do list really simple and really easy. You don't have to type in the address into Google Maps and all that. It just does it right there, which I think is amazing. Also, today, they just made this announcement. They have a new feature, it's called Ask an Agent. Okay, so you know, you're there like on the, on the home tour and you're looking at all the houses and you're thinking, oh, I want to ask an agent something because not everything is going to be on listing, right? Because you might be there thinking, hmm, I wonder when the roof was repaired last. I wonder what the traffic is like going to downtown at 4 o'clock p.m. You just click on ask an agent, agent calls you. Kind of amazing, I think. Moving on. Um, if you decide to tour a home, you can take photos from your camera phone during the tour and save them to the home details page to view later on the app. Another amazing feature that they have. They also have a feature called instant updates, which uh, is where you are alerted that a home comes on the market that meets your search criteria. Now they have, because of their amazing technology, uh, basically what happens is, is there's an MLS, it's a multiple listing service, and it's updated through Redfin every 15 minutes. Nobody else does that. So you're on the app and you're like, oh my God, you're way ahead of the game. Why would you want to go anywhere else? Because it's just every 15 minutes, a house is up for sale, it just went up $40,000, whatever. On Redfin, it's there for you. Fast updates, I love it. Also, um, they just announced today an updated redesigned iphone app so today on the iphone their app has been redesigned announced today on their blog at redfin.com you really should download the app i highly suggest you do it immediately also as i mentioned last week they're having a launch party a downtown cocktail room Ooh. next thursday from 6 to 8 p.m it'd be funny if it was, it was a.m wouldn't it but no um from <laughs> 6 to 8 so it's right for the podcast it's perfect you just go to a downtown cocktail room free food free drinks, there's gonna be swag and prizes and stuff. They're even gonna have like iPad displays so you can play with the app over there, downtown cocktail room. And then you come here to the podcast. So once again, I wanna thank our sponsors, redfin.com. Yes, 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 yes. And then I have one last thing. This week happens to be National Backyard Games Week. Who enjoys backyard games? Lungards. What, yes? You always yes. shout things, Pablo, and I'm like- Lungards. <laughs> Non-darts. I'm always like, what is Pablo saying? I want it. So I know it's funny, but I'm not like, okay, thank you. Um, so what, what, what establishment close by has like games in the backyard? Gold Spike. Yes, Gold Spike, yes. Well, my really, really good friend, Alethea, AKA Ali Prudence, who is the known as to be the sort of uh, programming princess at Downtown Project, uh, has invited through me to you guys to go to Gold Spike tonight from 10 to one. They are having out of town bands playing this evening. One is called The Corners, no, no, it's The Mystic. Yeah, one is called The Mystic and they're playing, um, they're from Echo Park, which is known as like Hipster Central in Los Angeles. Another band uh, is a rock band, they're called Corners. So from 10 to one tonight, we gotta go and support, check out these bands. Uh, it's free to get in, of course, and it's 21 and older. And uh, I just think it's kind of amazing that Gold Spike features these out of town music guests every single week. And people kind of go there for like the games and to kind of chill, but they have music now that's amazing that Ali is booking. So we need to go and support. Happy holidays. Love you guys. Good night. <laughs>
can't forget to spell it with the hashtag.